blood of the moon Katrina was sleeping peacefully when a loud thump woke her. Something slammed into the house hard enough to shake it and wake her. She immediately looked to her right for her husband, reaching out with her hand to try and shake him awake, but he wasn't in the bed. That wasn't just something strange, it flat out bothered her. If he were just using the bathroom or something he'd have come back and told her to stay put while he took a look around, but she couldn't hear him moving through the house. Katrina turned to her left to the nightstand she had and turned on her lamp. In between the stand and her bed was a pump-action shotgun. Katrina grabbed it and checked to see if it was loaded. She could see a shell loaded and that made her a little happier and feel a bit more secure. Katrina rummaged through her nightstand and took hold a flashlight, checking to see if the batteries were still good by turning it on. The light was bright and illuminated the room as she got up with it in her left hand. The shotgun was in her right while she cautiously edged out of the room. And then it happened again. A loud boom and the house shook. Katrina tried her best to hold both the flashlight and the pump of the gun while moving through the house. The first thing she did was to check on the kids. She peeked in on them and found them still asleep in their beds. Somehow all seven of the kids had managed to stay asleep with all the loud thuds and rumbles shaking the house. That much she was thankful for as it meant that she didn't have to keep anyone calm except herself and she was having a bit of trouble keeping herself calm. Katrina could hear growling coming from outside the house and it frightened her. The gun gave her some sense of security but not a large one as her fear was still very much gripping her heart and mind firmly. The windows rattled as something slammed against the house again, this time by the front door. Katrina looked out of a window and saw two large dark figures attacking one another. She kept her flashlight down, so it didn't shine out the window and alert the two figures to her presence while she watched the two tussle. Katrina kept the flashlight aimed at the ground going as far as to turn it off as she made her way to the front door. She stuck her flashlight in the pants pocket of her pajamas before reaching for the knob of the front door. What made her even more on edge was the fact that the door was unlocked. Slowly she turned the knob and hoped that whatever was out there wasn't right in front of the door, or somewhere close that she'd be immediately noticed as soon as she opened the door. The door creaked as she opened it and it seemed to be the loudest thing she had ever heard as Katrina winced while the creaking sound seemed to echo in her ears. Her eyes darted around for a moment as he left hand found itself back on the pump of her gun, lifting it somewhat to at least try and be prepared for whatever was outside. She lived in a little place in the country called Brotmanville, a place on the outskirts of Salem County where the houses were spread out from one another and there were plenty of wooded areas and wildlife roaming around. The motion sensor lights finally kicked on and shed more light on the two figures out in her front yard. They were big, huge and hairy as they growled and bit and tore at one another. They looked almost like bears fighting it out, but something was wrong with that. The way they were moving was too fast for it to be a couple of bears and yet she couldn't figure out what else they could be. The two were fighting and going back and forth as they bit and clawed at one another until they were a few meters away from one another. They were breathing out of their mouths and their breath was becoming visible for a few moments before disappearing altogether. And then the two of them suddenly looked over at Katrina as if something had suddenly alerted them to her presence. The outside lights helped her see that they definitely were not bears. One had a dirty brown coat of fur while the other had a black coat of fur. The brown-coated thing leapt forward and was coming straight for Katrina. A look of absolute horror was on her face as she was sure she was about to die, but not without some kind of fight. Katrina was scared out of her mind as she held her shotgun up and pulled back on the trigger. The shotgun boomed loudly in her ears as the buckshot flew out and slammed into not the brown one, but the black one. The black one leapt up as well but had rammed itself into the brown one just before the buckshot ripped into its back. The two of them crashed into the ground with the black one on top of the brown one. The brown creature was squirming and clawing at the black creature as the black creature locked its jaws around the brown creature's neck. Razor fangs tore into leathery flesh just before the black monster began to shake viciously. The brown creature clawed at the black one's head as much as it could but soon stopped. 
there was a sickening snap as the brown one's neck broke under the tremendous pressure and strength of the black monster's jaws. The black one shook the brown one violently a few more times as Katrina pumped another shell into the barrel. The black one opened its maw and let the brown one fall lifelessly to the ground before it turned to look at Katrina. She held her gun up and was ready to fire again, but the black creature turned back to the brown one. Katrina cringed as the black one lifted what should have been a paw, but seemed more like a clawed hand, and then brought it down and tore into the brown thing's chest. The black creature slashed and tore at the brown creature's chest until he reached the sternum and then yanked and ripped it out of the lifeless creature's chest, exposing a bloody mess, and internal organs. The black monster didn't stop there. He started chewing at the open cavity, biting and chewing before it tore the very heart out of the other creature's chest. The black monster looked up to the sky as it chewed and swallowed the brown one's heart. And then it stood up to its full height. It was almost nine feet tall when standing on just its hind legs, easily as large as a bear, but the head was wrong, so were the arms and it had a tail like a wolf. The black one's ears perked for a moment as it turned towards Katrina. It didn't make any move towards her, though it did start to shrink. She could hear bones breaking as its fur coat started to just shed and fall off its body. The fur fell away and revealed brown skin and a very muscular form that was decreasing his mass but kept the tone. Katrina panicked and pulled back on the trigger as the thing took a step towards her. This time she was certain that she hit the creature because his right shoulder jerked back just before it fell to the ground. Katrina pumped in another round as she took a few steps closer to it. It had a more human appearance now than it did just a few moments ago. Katrina wanted to know just what this thing looked like and if it actually did hold some sort of resemblance to anything human. When she was standing over what was once the black creature her shotgun fell out of her grasp as she placed her hands over her mouth. The body that was now lying in front of her was that of her husband, Dorian with buckshot in the right side of his chest. Dorian was bleeding, but that didn't matter at all to Katrina as she took him up in her arms. Tears started to roll down her face as she was coming to grips with what she had just done, she shot her husband. She easily put the fact that he wasn't in a human form not so long ago, out of her mind as she pressed her forehead to his cheek and started to rock back and forth a bit. Come on baby, wake up. Please wake up. I'm so sorry. Baby wake up. She kept saying as she let her right hand brush over his low cut hair and slide gently over his cheek and his goatee. He was completely naked, but that hadn't fully registered in her mind yet as she held him as close to her and hugged him as tightly as she could. Baby, I'm so sorry. Please wake up. Please wake up. She said as the tears streamed down her face. His body was surprisingly warm. His temperature was well over a hundred degrees, but no beads of sweat were on his body. This made it a little easier to hold him in the cool night air even though Katrina wasn't thinking of that now. Dorian's chest lurched forward, and Katrina let him go. His eyes were still closed, but the blood had slowed down a lot compared to when she first shot him in the chest. She had to get him inside, but the question was how would she do it? Dorian was a good 240 pounds of muscle compared to her 150 pound frame that didn't have nearly as much muscle in comparison. First, she placed her head over his chest and listened for a moment. His heartbeat was faint, but it was there, that gave her more hope for the situation than she had about a minute ago. Katrina stood up and moved by Dorian's head, grabbing his arms and dragging him as best she could over towards the front door. As she was struggling to pull him to the front steps she looked over and saw the body that used to be the dark and dirty brown furred creature. It was in a human form as well, at least what was left of him. Some Caucasian guy with his chest ripped out was now laying there in her front yard and she knew she had to deal with that as well, but first things first, she had to get Dorian in the house. She dragged and heaved him up the steps scraping his body against the stone surface and adding a few scraps to his injuries as she finally managed to get him in the house. She was a little tired from all the effort. It wasn't until just then that she realized how heavy her husband was as dead weight. After a small break, Katrina dragged Dorian away from the door so that she could be able to close it, 
but then figured that she shouldn't just leave the dead guy lying in the front yard. This time she tried to be a little smarter about things and so she bent down and rolled the dead guy as best she could towards the door, making sure not to place her hands in the torn open cavity in his chest as she did so. When she got him to the front step, then she started to drag him up the steps into the house. The hardwood flooring in the living room made things a bit easier once the two were in the house as it gave her less resistance than a carpet would. She was starting to calm down a little bit, but not by much. She was at least calm enough to figure that she should give Dorian's dad a call and hope that he could help with the situation. Katrina shut the door and made sure to secure each lock on the door before rushing back to her room and rummaging around on her nightstand for her cell phone. She was trying to make as little noise as possible while moving past the children's rooms so that none of them would wake up and further complicate the matter. As soon as she reached the living room again, she dialed Dorian's father's number and hoped he would pick up. The phone rang and rang for what seemed like forever before Dorian's father answered. What happened? He asked in a somewhat groggy voice. Katrina was ecstatic and even more confused at the same time. How much of the situation could she relay to his father? How much did he know compared to her? Dorian's family was close, but she was his wife and they had been together for almost eight years and even she didn't know anything about what Dorian was, what he could change into. Hello? What happened? What's going on? Dorian's father asked making Katrina realize that she had just been standing with the phone to her ear and hadn't said a word as she debated on what to tell him. Um, um, okay, uh, Dorian, he, she was stammering over her words, trying to find the best way to explain what happened without giving everything away. He got into a fight and, he got shot. He was bleeding and he changed, and I dragged him into the house. He's alive, but he hasn't woken up yet and I'm scared and I don't know if I should call an ambulance. Katrina was explaining as she held her head in her left hand while she paced back and forth. You said he changed. How? What do you mean? Dorian's father asked as he seemed to be more awake at that point in the conversation. He, he was big, really big and then he got smaller and I was scared, and I shot him. I didn't know it was him. I swear, I didn't know. I don't know what to do. I just. It's okay. I'll be right over. Don't let your kids see him like that. Dorian's father said and then he hung up the phone. Katrina was still as stressed as ever with the situation. She decided to try and get Dorian up onto the couch, heaving and straining and somehow managing the task before looking to the dead guy that was still a bloody mess on her living room floor. She could wash the blood away from the floor, but it was a different situation altogether if the blood got on the furniture. If anyone came looking for the guy, she wanted to leave no clues that he had ever been around or even in the house at all, but she felt limited on options. She had watched quite a few episodes of CSI but wasn't sure just how much any of that would come in handy now. Katrina paced back and forth for a few minutes before she sat next to Dorian and held his hand. It was still feverishly hot like the rest of his body. She placed her hand over his chest and could feel his heart beating stronger now than what it was right after she had shot him the second time. Baby, I am so sorry. Please wake up. You can't leave me like this. Not like this, Katrina said as she held his hand tightly in hers. She was so focused on Dorian and what to do with the dead guy off to the side of the door that she nearly jumped out of her skin when there was a knock at the door. Katrina's mind raced as to what she should do thinking that maybe one of the neighbors had seen something of the fight between Dorian and the other guy before they made it back to her house. Open the door. It's Ethan and Steve. Dorian's father. Ethan said before knocking on the door again. Katrina's heart sank to the bottom of her feet and then slowly came back up into her chest as she inhaled and tried to calm herself enough to at least answer the door. Her hands were shaking as she undid the locks and opened the door and there standing before her were Ethan and Steve. Dorian's father and younger brother. Ethan was just as big and muscular as Dorian was, both being just over six feet in height and weighing over 240 pounds while Steve was slightly taller, coming in at six foot three inches and weighed about 220 pounds. Ethan shaved his head while Steve cut his hair low like Dorian did, but all three of them had goatees. 
Ethan and Steve stepped inside and immediately looked to the man a small way off from the door with his chest torn out. Ethan and Steve looked at one another and then at Katrina but said nothing as Steve bent down and then picked the guy up before slinging him over his right shoulder. Ethan took Dorian in his arms and then slung him over his shoulder before the two of them started walking towards Dorian's bedroom. Katrina was following closely behind them and then locked the bedroom door as Ethan placed Dorian on the bed and turned towards Katrina with a stern look in his eye. Steve placed the body he had on the floor on the far side of the bed so no one that came in could just see a dead body and start asking questions. Exactly how much did you see? Don't lie. We'll know if you do. Ethan asked as he kept his attention focused on Katrina, studying her body movements and her breathing. He, he was big and broke the other guy's neck and then tore his chest out and ate his heart. I didn't know what was going on and when he was shrinking, I shot him. I didn't know it was him. Katrina managed to say calmly as she was looking over at Dorian lying there on the bed. She had just noticed that the many holes in his chest had stopped bleeding and that there were even fewer holes in his chest now than when she had drug him into the house. He's gonna be pissed when he wakes up. Steve said as he folded his arms in front of his chest and began leaning against the far wall. He's gonna wake up though, right? Katrina asked with both worry and excitement in her voice. He'll wake up. I guess it's time the two of you had that talk he's been meaning to have with you for a while. Ethan said as he turned and looked back at Dorian. Dorian lunged up off the bed while the last bits of buckshot were expelled from his body. He looked around and saw his brother and father and then his gaze settled on Katrina's form. You fucking shot me. He roared. A pair of fangs present in his upper set of teeth as his eyes became a deep blue with a black outline. Dorian swung his legs around the bed and set his feet onto the floor before slowly bringing himself to stand up. Katrina watched as the last little holes in his chest reconnected as if he were never shot to begin with. For the first time ever. She felt like she was actually in danger from him as he took a few steps toward her. Calm down, boy. You just needed a little time to heal up. Ethan said as he watched Dorian take a step towards Katrina. And put some fucking pants on. Nobody wants to see your shit hanging and swangin', bruh. Steve said. Pointing out the obvious fact that Dorian was still naked. Dorian stopped in his tracks and looked down at himself and then back at Katrina. She watched as his blue eyes started to change in color as the vibrant blue was overtaken by the dark brown she was used to seeing. His fangs were retracting while he turned and walked over to his dresser. He rummaged through it for a moment before pulling a pair of black sweatpants out and slipping them on. I need you to sit down for a minute, Dorian said in a much calmer voice as he was pushing his drawer closed. I'll stand here, thanks. Katrina said as she kept close to the door. If I were going to hurt you, I'd have done it years ago. Things changed. You saw me. Dorian said as he seemed sad somehow about things. Guess you're gonna have that long talk you've been planning on having for a while? Steve teased. Yes, asshole, we're gonna have the talk. Dorian said in a somewhat aggravated and aggressive tone as he looked at Steve. I think I proved I already know about the birds and the bees, thanks. Katrina said as she had her hand on doorknob behind her just in case she needed to try and make a quick escape. But you didn't know about me. Not until tonight. I wanted to tell you for a while. So why the hell didn't you? Katrina yelled at him as she cut him off. Because it wasn't just my secret to tell. I tell you about me and you figure things out about the rest of us. And then there's the point of whether you believe me unless I shifted in front of you. And then there's the point of what you'd do after I did. I didn't know whether or not you'd run away screaming and crying or some shit. Dorian explained. Which is generally why we try to keep to our own kind when it comes to relationships. Ethan said as he was propping his elbow up on his knee and then putting his head in his hand. Pop. If I found one that didn't try to challenge me on absolutely everything and didn't think they somehow had a bigger dick than mine, I'd have settled with a wolf blood. Dorian said to Ethan as he folded his arms up in front of his chest akin to what Steve had done. Can we hurry this shit along? This body is starting to fucking stink. Don't act like I'm the only one that can smell it either. 
Steve said before kicking the dead body on the floor one good time. As I remember, you're the one that can't take the stench of a dead body, or clowns. Dorian said as his head swiveled around toward Steve. Fuck you. You know damn well that clown wasn't just a fucking clown. Steve said defensively as his arms fell to his sides. Yeah, I know. I'm the one that ate him after I heard you crying. Dorian said before turning back towards Katrina. An expression like she had just had an epiphany of some sort lit up all over her face. Your kids know about you, don't they? Katrina asked as she took a step closer to Dorian. Yes. I got them used to the concept when they were young. I'd walk around in war form and downshift in front of them, so they had a better time comprehending. I never upshifted in front of them until they got older. Dorian explained with a small nod of his head at the beginning. Upshift? Downshift? Katrina asked as she was standing just off to his left side. It's just terms we use for changing. Upshifting is when we take our war form the big wolf creature. Downshifting is when we take our human forms again. Most often we just call it shifting. Ethan stated as he moved his head away from his hand but kept his attention on Katrina. So, your oldest two are like you? Katrina asked while looking Dorian directly in the eye. Yes, he answered. He opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something, but then decided to simply close his mouth again. And the three we have together? She asked, and Dorian just nodded to answer instead of saying anything. And all of those times I thought you might have been sneaking around with another woman. It was all just, wolf business? Katrina asked, still looking Dorian square in the eye. Yes, he answered. Katrina slapped him as hard as she could with her right hand. Dorian's head turned to the right and then he snapped his attention back to Katrina with obvious anger in his eyes. You know how often I thought you were fucking around on me? Do you know what that was like for me? I started to file for divorce three different times because of that shit. Katrina yelled at him with tears welling up in her eyes. Dorian immediately calmed down after seeing how much pain she was expressing and trying to work through. Try to calm down and please sit down. I'll try to answer every question you have. Dorian said as he rubbed his cheek for a moment and then looked over at the bed. Katrina moved away from Dorian and sat on the foot of the bed and thought about the question she wanted to ask him. When did you get bitten? I didn't. I was born like this. We all were. Remember how I told you that I'm black, white, Puerto Rican and two tribes of Native American? Dorian answered and then asked a question of his own. Katrina looked at Ethan and then Steve after now understanding that they too were like Dorian. Yeah, I remember. So, it's the native tribes in you that make you like that? Katrina said as she was trying to figure out how he and his family for that matter, could all end up being werewolves. It's not just that, everyone has it that Anubis was a jackal god, but they misinterpret him. His children were werewolves and the African heritage in me, on both sides of my family are descended from him. The white heritage in us were descended from druids that learned how to shape shift and often took the form of wolf creatures, and then there's the two tribes of Native American in me are said to have managed to mate with wolves and thus those children were among the first wolf bloods in that part of our family. Dorian explained before he walked over in front Katrina and crouched down a bit in front of her. So, what's the Puerto Rican in you do? Katrina asked as she quirked up her right eyebrow while looking at him. Same as the Puerto Rican and Italian in you. Nothing. There's a chance it might add to things, but no one's really sure. You have any more questions? Dorian said as he took her hands in his. Why'd you kill that guy? Katrina asked before looking over at her side of the bed where Steve was and then back at Dorian. I was wondering that myself. Ethan said as he was also looking at Dorian. He came into the territory and was starting to scare people. I explained the rules pretty clearly and he didn't like what he heard, and he thought he could take me. Dorian explained clearly as if the death battle he was in not so long ago was nothing new to him. What rules? Katrina asked with a perplexed look upon her face. She was doing her best to process all the information she was receiving, but a few things were still a puzzle to her. The rules of the land. 
I rule this area and if you want to stay here you abide by them. If not you leave or die. Don't kill humans unless you absolutely need to. Don't get the humans curious and draw attention. That way the hunters don't find us. Dorian stated as he stood up to allow his legs to stretch a bit. Hunters? Seriously? Stuff like that exists? Katrina asked as she looked around at the three of them. We exist. Steve said in a somewhat sarcastic manner before kicking the dead body again. Can we please do something about him? Dude is really starting to stink. You're just smelling his intestines. Shut the hell up. Can't believe you can't deal with a dead body. Dorian said as he shot a glance at Steve and then looked back at Katrina. No. I can smell it now and I don't want dead body stench in my bedroom. So yeah. Can we do something about that before the kids wake up? Katrina said as she looked over towards the body. Dorian laughed a little bit and then nodded at her before looking at Steve. You still know how to make a body disappear? Dorian asked in a sarcastic manner as he looked at Steve. Yeah, we can make it disappear, but you know that boy's first change is coming soon. You figure out where you're holding the right yet? Steve questioned as he started to pick up the dead body and sling it over his shoulder. A small portion of its intestines wriggled up and touched on his shoulder. Steve could smell the fecal matter barely kept in place by the intestines and shook his head while holding his nose with his left hand. I have a place picked out. I was planning on talking to him about it today. I still plan to. Dorian said as Steve walked by him with the body on his shoulder. Steve stopped for a moment and then patted Dorian on the shoulder before returning his left hand to his nose and continuing to walk towards the door. Just let us know and we'll be there. Ethan said as he got up from the bed and walked out of the bedroom right behind Steve. Dorian looked at Katrina and saw that she still had questions in her eyes, but she hadn't said anything yet, even as Steve and Ethan were walking out. The two moved quietly through the house and eventually outside, locking the door behind them before tossing the body into their car and heading off. Dad? Damon said as he was rubbing his eye with his right hand. The eldest son. The eldest child of Dorian now stood in the doorway of his bedroom, looking down the hall and then back at his father. His skin tone easily displayed the fact that while his father, although having a multi-ethnic background, was more on the darker side of skin pigment, he was more towards the lighter side of brown as his mother was Caucasian as well. I smell, Damon started to say but became immediately tight-lipped when he looked over at his stepmother Katrina. You smell blood, I know. We have a lot to talk about in the morning. I found a place for your first shift. Dorian stated and the fact that he was being so open about things they had kept secret for years baffled Damon. A look of confusion took a firm grip on his face as Damon looked between Katrina and Dorian for a moment. She knows. She saw me in war form tonight. I, had to kill someone tonight. He was like us. Give your stepmom some props though. She shot me in the chest with a shotgun even though she was scared out of her mind. Dorian said with a bit of the laugh towards the end. He was obviously teasing Katrina. But she and Damon were just looking back and forth between each other and Dorian before she nodded and remembered she left her shotgun outside. Katrina got up and moved past Damon before heading down the hall. But Damon stopped her by yanking on her arm as Dorian moved in front of her. Dorian and Damon sniffed at the air their noses drinking in all the different smells around them before both lowered themselves a bit and started to growl. Both of their eyes had transformed to a vibrant blue with black outlining and had a pair of fangs in their upper set of teeth. Katrina knew instantly that there must have been something wrong, something that posed enough of a threat that the two of them were growling and ready for a fight. Whatever it was that had them riled up even woke up Dorian's daughter, Andrea. She was 11 years old just three years younger than Damon, and stood at five feet three inches. Her hair was tied back in a ponytail, but her eyes were the same as her father and brothers, her fangs were even out as she looked around and then saw Katrina standing between Dorian and Damon. Four, Damon said, unsure of the number as the scents were all attacking his nose at the same time. He was trying to concentrate on the sound of the people outside breathing, but it wasn't helping much. Even concentrating on their heartbeats wasn't helping him. 
though he was just starting to learn about how to do all of that. 5. They're surrounding the house. The three of you go to the kids' rooms now and stay there until I come for you. Trina. There's a handgun with silver bullets taped to the bottom of each of their beds. Don't ask right now. Just go. Dorian said as he ventured towards the front door. Dorian heard one of them claw at the door and broke the doorframe as he ripped the door open without unlocking it. Standing in front of him on his front step was a woman that looked to be Latina. Puerto Rican possibly. With a right hand that had black claws in the place of her nails. Dorian reacted almost immediately without thinking when he saw her. His right foot shot forward and slammed square into the center of her chest. The blow blasted the air from her lungs as she went shooting backwards through the air. Dorian felt a fist impact with his left jaw and force his head to snap to the right for a moment. Dorian's head turned back almost instantly, and he focused on a young Latin man, presumably the girl's brother, but Dorian didn't care at this point. Dorian grabbed the guy by the back of his head with his left hand and then slammed the boy's face into the edge of the doorframe before punching him in the face. The young man stumbled backwards as his nose and lips were bleeding, placing a hand over his mouth and then pulling it away and looking at the amount of blood settled into the palm of his hand. The girl leapt up at Dorian, but he caught her in midair by the throat with his left hand and started to squeeze, slowly cutting off her oxygen supply. She clawed at his face as much as she could, tearing away bits of flesh and creating several lacerations on his face, but Dorian didn't care about any of it. Dorian hoisted her up higher with his left arm before beating her head against the same doorframe edge that he slammed the young man against. Dorian was about to slam her head against the doorframe once more when a fist crashed into his face. Dorian let the girl go and fell back into the house. Standing in the doorway was a large man even bigger than Dorian was. Dorian got up off the floor as the man was coming into the house and tackled him right back out of the door. Dorian landed on top and had the man in a mounted position as he drew his right fist back, but the Latino man and woman pulled him off their companion. Dorian landed on his back but performed a kip up back to his feet while flexing his fingers out of his palm and revealing his own set of claws at the ends of his fingers. The large guy was moving towards Dorian, both prepared to clash with one another just before the sound of gunfire rang out into the air. The harsh smell of silver and gunpowder assaulted all their noses as a bullet pierced the young man's shoulder. Dorian turned somewhat to see that Katrina was standing in the doorway of the house armed with a handgun in both hands. The young man felt the silver in him burning like fire in the back of his shoulder and cried out in pain as the young woman rushed over to him. Carlite sped towards the group with Steve hopping out of the car before it even came to a full stop. Ethan came out of the car next and the two of them started towards the three that had attacked Dorian. That's enough, for tonight. We just want the body of our comrade, and we'll be on our way. Said the man standing at the edge of the front yard said. Dorian figured he must have obviously been the alpha of the pack as the three that were attacking Dorian were backing away. The young man with the silver bullet in his shoulder was still aching and very much in pain as he placed a hand over his wound and sucked in air through his teeth when the young woman touched it. Dorian nodded to Steve as the young woman took a clawed index and middle finger to dig out the silver bullet lodged in the young man's shoulder. He tried to stay as still as he could as she dug around, crying out in pain a little while Steve pulled out the body from the car and slung it over his shoulder. The large man walked over to Steve and growled a bit before Steve handed the body over, but the two of them were glaring at one another. The five attackers began walking away into the distance and disappeared into the woods as Dorian, Steve and Ethan were walking towards the house. Katrina gathered her shotgun and slung it over her left shoulder as she still had the pistol with the silver bullets in it in her right hand. Dorian stopped at the door and stared at the deep claw marks in the door for a moment, just as Leia and Marie, Katrina's two daughters, were coming around into the living room. Dorian immediately turned away from them and closed his eyes to try and ensure that the two human girls didn't see his eyes be transformed, also because he was still healing from the claw attacks to his face from the young woman. 
Steve and Ethan closed their eyes too for a moment as Katrina made sure to stand in front of her daughters so that their attention would fall on her instead of them. What are you guys doing up and out here? We heard a lot of noise and something like a gunshot. Leia said as she tilted her head to the side and saw the claw marks on the door. Katrina turned and saw what she was looking at and then turned back to her girls. There was a bear here. We managed to scare it off before anything bad happened. You two go back to bed. I'll be in there to check on you in a few minutes. Katrina said as she put a smile on her face to try and influence the girls to stay calm and do as they were instructed without asking any more questions. Fortunately, they didn't, and went back to their room. Dorian turned around as they were leaving and placed his left hand on the side of his face for a moment. It stung like hell to him for a few seconds before he took his hand away and looked at his palm to see how much blood was present on it. He was trying to measure how deep his wounds were and how fast he was healing by the amount of blood still coming out of the wound. How do you guys know to come back? Dorian asked as he was wiping blood onto his pants while looking at his brother and father. Could smell them with the window down and figured there was more trouble. You already killed one tonight. Chances were they were coming for him. Obviously, we were right. Ethan explained as he was looking at Dorian's face to see how well he was healing. The wounds were almost closed and healing faster than even Ethan thought they would. They would. We can hang around for a little and make sure that they don't come back. Steve said as he was closing the back door of the car. Nah. We'll be okay. Trina has a few more guns lying around the house she can use. Dorian said with a bit of a laugh as he turned to look at her. You were really serious about letting her know, weren't you? Ethan asked as he focused on the pistol with the silver bullets. Of course, I was. I just didn't know when or how to tell her. Dorian answered as he stepped next to her. You need to teach me how to protect myself and my girls from shit like this. Is a gun with silver bullets gonna be the answer each time? Is it that simple? Katrina said as she was looking at Dorian with a concerned look on her face. You know what she's really asking you to teach her without really knowing it, right? Steve asked as he was opening the front passenger side door of the car. There was a small stint of silence as Katrina looked between the three wolf bloods and then settled her attention on Dorian. Yeah, I know. Teach her how to be a hunter. Dorian said as he was looking at Katrina. Katrina didn't fully understand what such a thing meant, but she knew it was obviously something serious. She could figure out at the very least that hunters saw werewolves as their prey, and that meant that they knew how to kill wolf bloods. She figured that's what it meant to defend yourself against a wolf blood. One of you were probably going to die in the effort. That's why there are guns with silver bullets all in the kids' room, isn't there? Katrina asked as she looked down at the gun in her hand and then over at Dorian. You know what she's really asking you to teach her without really knowing it, right? Steve asked as he was opening the front passenger side door of the car. There was a small stint of silence as Katrina looked between the three wolf bloods and then settled her attention on Dorian. Yeah, I know. Teach her how to be a hunter. Dorian said as he was looking at Katrina. Katrina didn't fully understand what such a thing meant, but she knew it was obviously something serious. She could figure out at the very least that hunters saw werewolves as their prey, and that meant that they knew how to kill wolf bloods. She figured that's what it meant to defend yourself against a wolf blood. One of you were probably going to die in the effort. That's why there are guns with silver bullets all in the kids' room, isn't there? Katrina asked as she looked down at the gun in her hand and then over at Dorian. I meant to tell you for a while now. I just didn't know how. Kinda not something you bring up in a casual conversation. Dorian said while he was walking over to the couch. Steve and Ethan waved and then closed the doors to the car before starting it up. Katrina waved and then closed the door and walked over to the couch, setting the shotgun on the floor in front of them and resting her head on his shoulder. You're a rat bastard for keeping that from me for so long, you know that? At least I made sure we were prepared for the day I actually told you. That part was harder than you think. I couldn't leave them in Andrea or Damon's room because the silver would have been all they smelled, 
and I couldn't have left them in Leia or Marie's room because they might touch them or tell you about them before I was ready to tell you. This whole thing is bullshit. I had to put them in bags, so we didn't smell the silver all through the house. Dorian said as he wrapped his arm around Katrina and rubbed his hand up and down her arm. You guys can smell silver? Katrina asked as she lifted her head off Dorian's shoulder. Yes. And it burns. I don't know how to explain it. Dorian said as he was trying to find a decent comparison for her to try and understand him just a bit better. It's kind of like when you smell smoke. A little bit of smoke doesn't bother you. But if it's thick enough it burns the hell out of your nose. Dorian explained and then pulled her close to him and she laid her head on his shoulder again. Silver is like acid or fire to us. It burns and can leave scars if we're not careful. Hunters lace their bullets with poisons that slow us down if the first shot doesn't kill us outright. That's about the only thing I envy vampires for. They don't react to silver, or poison. Wait, vampires exist too? Katrina asked as she popped up off his shoulder again. Dorian just looked at her with an expression that suggested she just accept that and move on and pulled her close to him again. Anyway, it's a miracle the little ones stayed asleep through all of this. I'm very glad for that, but I think it's time we all get some sleep. Dorian suggested as he removed his arm from around Katrina and stood up from the couch. Katrina just nodded, having been somewhat tired herself and followed behind Dorian as he left the living room and stopped in and checked on all the children. Leia and Marie were well on their way back to sleep when their door creaked open, but Damon and Andrea were wide awake in their younger sibling's room. Dorian nodded to them and pointed with his thumb out of the room. They both understood and went back to their own rooms as Dorian and Katrina went on to their room. Katrina and Dorian settled into bed after Katrina put the safety on her pistol and placed it under her pillow. Dorian shook his head bit as he looked at her. Don't trust me to protect you anymore? Dorian asked. I woke up next to an empty bed and the shotgun I have didn't do dick to stop you until you were in human form. Can't blame me for having a just-in-case backup plan, Katrina said as she fluffed her pillow and then rested her head upon it. Dorian placed his left hand over his face and shook his head from side to side a few times and then let his hand fall to his side as he settled into bed. The two of them fell fast asleep and slept well through the night until the first rays of the sun broke through the window and woke Dorian up. He got up out of bed and shut the blinds before resting his hands on the windowsill. Thankfully today was Saturday and the kids had the day off, but he needed to coach Damon through his first change. Some tribes waited until the full moon to take hold and force the change, but Dorian's family did things differently. They taught the wolf blood to initiate the change on their own and not depend on the moon, making it easier to control the more primal urges and as a result, the change itself. Dorian watched the sun come up and debated on a few things such as taking Damon out for his first shift that day, whether or not to call his brother and father to help with it, having Katrina take Leia, Marie, Lana, Rickard and Jacob to her mother's for a while so that he could have some time to hunt down that other pack and figure out whether or not to take action after seeing what their reasoning was for being in his territory. He found that he had become so engrossed in thought that he didn't even notice Katrina get up out of bed. He jumped a bit as she placed her hand on his shoulder. That was the first time that she had caught him off guard and because of that she knew he was seriously and fully distracted. Dorian turned and looked at her and even managed a smile before huffing out a sigh as he made his decision. I need you to take the kids to your mom's place today. I don't want you guys here if anything happens. But Damon and Andrea are okay to be here? Katrina asked as she folded her arms up in front of her chest. They can handle themselves. I've been teaching them how to fight. Not just martial arts, but how to use their wolf blood abilities too. Unless the guy's as strong as I am, I'm more than confident they'll be okay. Dorian said as he was searching through his dresser for a shirt to put on. So, what happens if they go war form, before you do? Katrina asked as she started searching for something to wear as well. Doesn't make a difference. They've sparred with me when I was in war form just so they'd get used to the idea of fighting against someone like that. 
Dorian said as he was slipping into a black shirt. So, who changed first last night? Katrina asked as she was pulling out a pair of blue jeans and a navy blue long-sleeved shirt from her dresser. He did. He was losing in human form and tried to fight me in his war form while I was still in human form. I was still beating the hell out of him until he got a lucky shot in and put his claws in my chest. I shifted to accelerate my healing. We fought and he started losing again. That's when he started running. I guess he got a good whiff of something from the house because he came straight here like it was going to save him. I rammed into him and he clawed at me. He caught my eye and I backed up. He jumped at me and I tossed him back against the house. Somewhere in there you came out and then he headed for you. You know the rest. Dorian described as he decided to grab a pair of jeans as well and began rummaging through his dresser again. You guys are huge when you shift. How could you stand up against him in your human form? Katrina asked as she was removing her pajama top and replacing it with an underwire bra and then the navy blue shirt she pulled out. We're a lot stronger than you think we are. All of us. I can bench almost a ton, literally. My dad is a little stronger than I am. And Steve is just under me by about 200 pounds. Damon can bench press 200 pounds on his own. Dorian explained as he slipped out of his sweatpants and as he was removing them remembered that he wasn't wearing any underwear. He set his pants aside and started looking through his dresser again. Damon? But he's just a boy. He just turned 14. Katrina exclaimed as she was trying to process the information she was just given. The guy that I fought was probably bitten. When you're born a wolf blood it's different. Your body has more time to get itself ready for the first change. After that you get a bit stronger after every shift you go through. Old wolf bloods are extraordinarily strong physically. The only reason I'm almost as strong as my dad is because he pushed us when we were younger. I hated him for it at the time. But as I got older, I started to understand why. We're something of a loose pack. Technically I have my own pack with the kids and that makes me an alpha. And Steve has his own kids. But if need be. We come together to help each other. Kind of like a pack of alphas. Dorian said as he was slipping on a pair of boxer briefs and then the baggy blue jeans he set on the bed. So, what's the difference between being bitten and being born like you? Katrina asked. She wasn't too clear on the issue and wasn't sure if the difference meant anything. Born wolf bloods are usually stronger than bitten ones. Like I said. Our bodies have more time to adjust to things before the first shift happens. But a bitten wolf blood can be just as strong if they work at it, though it takes a while. We heal faster from injuries for one. But bitten or born, healing makes us hungry. A born wolf blood in human form can be almost as powerful as a bitten wolf blood in war form, depending on how long they've been one of us. Dorian said as he was lacing his leather belt through his pant loops and then through the buckle. So that's why I can never keep any damn food in the house. Katrina said with a slightly disapproving tone as she was slipping on her jeans as well, hopping up and down a bit to get them over her hips before she zipped them up and fastened the button. Something like that, Dorian said with a laugh before grabbing his sneakers next to the bed with his socks still in them and first slipping his socks on before his shoes. Just be careful today and let me know when we can come home. Katrina said as she was grabbing her socks and shoes from her side of the bed. You know, you're pretty laid back about all of this, considering you watched me kill a guy and eat his heart in front of you. Dorian said as he leaned against the wall just to the left of the bedroom door. To be honest, some part of me knew. I watched how you'd be in the middle of a conversation and then just stop and look in a random direction with this expression like you were listening for something. Or the times I caught you sniffing at the air which I now know you were trying to catch a scent. And the time a few years back when I came home early from work and you were on the floor in the living room naked and sweaty and seemed pissed that I tried to surprise you. That's one of the times I was ready to file for divorce, by the way. Katrina said as she was tying her shoes but she made it a point to look Dorian in the eye during the part about getting divorced. I remember that. I had just got done fighting and put down a small pack that thought they could take me if I was by myself. I was tired and literally just finished healing up right before you walked through the door. 
I'm surprised my eyes were the right color. They weren't. That's one of the reasons I didn't file for divorce. When I walked in, they were blue, and I glared at you the whole time and then they were brown again. I thought I was crazy for a little bit, but I told myself I knew what I saw. I just left it alone after that. Katrina confessed as she put her hand on the knob and opened the door. Dorian was revisiting that time in his head, trying to remember whether he had shifted his eye color in time. He decided to leave it alone. After all Katrina stuck it out with him and even if he didn't there was no changing it now. The two of them walked out of the bedroom just as Damon was walking out of his. He was fully dressed in a black shirt with zombies all over the front of it and a pair of navy blue jeans. Damon stopped in his tracks as he looked at his dad and then at Katrina and back at his dad again. We're going into the woods today for your first shift. Katrina is taking everyone except Andrea and you to her mom's house just in case. I'm gonna call your uncle and grandfather so they can go with us for the ceremony. You okay with all of that? Dorian said before lightly punching Damon in the chest. Katrina was remembering how strong Dorian said Damon was and was examining him a little more closely, finding that he did indeed have more defined muscle in his arms than she had actually paid attention to before. Yeah, Pop, do I get to throw fireballs again? You don't let me do that anymore. Damon said as he nodded his head in agreement to what Dorian was saying and then tilted his head to the side as he looked at his father. Katrina looked at both curiosity and disbelief after hearing about Damon throwing fireballs. If you have enough energy after your first shift, you have to leave yourself enough energy to heal up from all of your bones breaking and your teeth growing back in twice. Dorian said before patting Damon on the shoulder and starting towards the kitchen. He was hungry, but all Katrina was thinking about was the fact that Damon had asked if they could throw fireballs around like before obviously meaning that they had done so previously. Okay, I know she's not really a factor anymore, but does their mother, know about them, about you? Katrina asked as she sat down at the kitchen table and watched Dorian pull out three hot pockets and pop them into the microwave. That witch knows, was the answer Dorian gave without even looking at Katrina and he punched in numbers on the microwave. You always refer to her as that whenever anyone brings her up, was she really that bad? Katrina asked as she was trying to figure out if Dorian's first wife was the reason. He was so cautious in waiting to explain what he was to her. No, I call her a witch because that's what she is. I swear that bitch had to have cast some sort of spell on me just to keep me around that long. Dorian said as his brows furrowed and showed his discontent with talking about his ex-wife. It was also slightly disturbing to Katrina that his ex-wife was a witch. She could have cast some sort of spell on Katrina and made her sick or turned her into a frog or something. Soon enough the microwave was dinging, and Dorian was removing his hot pockets from it and sitting down at the table. Andrea and Damon were soon coming around the corner because they could smell the food their father had prepared. Dorian was looking at his kids and then at his food before looking at his children again. Dorian growled, baring his fangs at the two of them as Andrea was walking up to him fearlessly. She kissed Dorian on the cheek and then took one of his hot pockets and started towards the living room. Dorian sighed in defeat and then pushed the paper plate with the other hot pocket on it into the center of the table as he looked at Damon. Damon took the plate and headed to the living room as well while Dorian just stared at him walking away. You really just let them house you for your food like that? Katrina asked as she was trying to not laugh at what she just witnessed. Shut the hell up, Dorian said as he got up from the table and returned to the fridge, grabbing a bottle of water and twisting the cap off with only his right hand as he looked at Katrina. Aren't you supposed to be getting the kids ready? Dorian said as Lana and Rickard came running into the kitchen. Lana was barely three feet tall and slightly over four years of age. Rickard was slightly shorter than Lana for his three years of age. Both were in pajamas and soon the one-year-old Jacob was stomping in behind his older brother and sister. Dorian took a long drink of his water before placing the cap back on the bottle and setting the bottle on the table and then holding his arms out. All three of the small children ran up to give him a hug and he wrapped his arms around all three of them as best he could, 
soaking up their hugs and loving it as Katrina took some of his water while watching him. He moved his arms and watched them smile before Lana started looking around for something. Dorian got up and kicked his legs out a bit to stretch before he looked at Katrina. I'm just gonna take the kids now. That way we'll be out of your way while you're trying to get ready. I'll call you and let you know when we get back and how everything went. Dorian said as he navigated past his young children and moved into the living room. Andrea and Damon had already finished their hot pockets and were watching television when Dorian stepped into the room and was looking at them as if they were very funny looking. What, daddy? Andrea asked as she wanted to know why Dorian was looking at them the way he was. I was wondering why the hell you two look ugly as all hell. But other than that, nothing? Dorian said as he started giving a sly smile and then lightly punched Damon in the arm again. Dork. Damon responded and went back to watching television. We're heading out in a bit. Go get dressed. I'll let you grandfather and uncle know when and where they can meet us. Boy. Pack an extra set of clothes. Dorian instructed as he looked at the two of them and then focused on Damon. Both children nodded and all three of them started back towards their rooms. Damon and Andrea closed their doors as Dorian walked into his room and grabbed his phone off his dresser. He started texting his father, Ethan that he and the kids were going into the woods soon, but that they'd be careful and would let he and Steve know how to find them, and that he please bring the silver blades he had for the kids. Dorian sent the message and slipped his phone into his front right pocket and started to leave the room but thought for a moment and decided to grab himself an extra set of clothing as well. He grabbed an old backpack and stuffed a pair of jeans, a shirt and some old sneakers inside of it and slung it over his right shoulder. Soon he, Damon and Andrea were heading out of the door with Damon having his own backpack with similar contents inside as the three walked past Leia and Marie while Katrina was feeding the youngest three in the kitchen. Dorian gave a quick wave to her and she blew him a kiss before he walked out the door. Dorian put his hand up and acted as if he had snatched the kiss out of the air, shook it a few times like he was listening to it rattle in his hand and then stuffed it in his pocket. Katrina just shook her head at him as they walked out of the door. Dorian and the children looked at the claw mark on the front door for a moment, each of them wondering if leaving for the middle of the woods right now with Katrina and the kids all being there at the house alone and unprotected. Their question was answered as Katrina opened the door and then shut it behind her. She was holding up one of the pistols with silver bullets in the magazine and waved it slightly before putting it in the back of her pants and using her shirt to cover it up. I'll have more than one on me and two magazines for each gun. Unless they can dodge a bunch of bullets all at once, I think I'm good. You guys go ahead. We'll be okay. Katrina said with a slight smile before she opened the door and disappeared behind it again. Dorian figured that his concerns this time were transparent given everything that had just happened the other night. He had thought about postponing Damon's ceremony until another day, but he knew that Katrina was a damn good shot, and he had his phone on him if anything were to happen. That other pack said they were going to leave things alone but he just couldn't shake this feeling in the pit of his stomach that they'd try something soon. He and the kids started off walking down the street very slowly. The kids knew why though and didn't say anything about it. Andrea took her father's hand and held it while swinging her arm back and forth as she hummed the infamous tune, Let It Go From Frozen. Leia had come out of the house with Jacob in her arms with Marie following with Rickard in hers. Rickard had what looked like a half of a hot pocket in one hand and a Pop-Tart in the other. Katrina walked out with Lana and a sippy cup in her hands as she walked towards the van they had. Dorian turned and watched for a moment as Katrina, Leia and Marie all settled the younger children into their car seats. This took an enormous weight off his shoulders as he nodded his head and then turned to continue walking. The woods weren't too much further and from there they could actually use their heightened speed without fear of anyone seeing them. Andrea was still holding Dorian's hand the whole way as she continued to hum along to the song in her head until they got a few meters into the woods. Dorian stopped and looked around for a moment as his eyes shifted. Andrea and Damon shifted their eyes as well and in unison they all took a long inhale of the air, taking in the sense around them while combining that with their enhanced hearing. 
The scent of the other pack was still around, but it was faint, and they couldn't hear any strong heartbeats that resembled a human's. Dorian nodded to the two of them and let go of Andreas' hand before starting off forward. He kept his pace slow enough so that Andrea and Damon could keep up with him as they chased behind him. A few minutes of running and they were far from their house. Dorian stopped and looked around a bit before heading towards a small clearing he had made and managed to maintain just for this occasion. Damon and Andrea looked around as they saw dream catchers and a headdress in the trees with a ring of flowers circling the outer area of the clearing. Damon immediately knew what the area was for, but he also knew it wasn't going to be used just for him. He looked over at Andrea who was fascinated with the flowers and headdress before they saw a necklace made from fangs hanging from a tree branch. Dorian set his bag down and Damon followed suit as he stepped in the center of the clearing. Damon followed, stopping just a meter or so from his father as the two looked at one another. Andy, sweetheart, I'm gonna need for you to pay attention on this part. When your brother shifts, I need you to stay alert and stay hidden while I help him work through it, okay? Dorian said as he looked over at her. Okay, daddy, Andrea said with a cheerful smile while leaning against the tree with the dream catcher on it. Okay. You know that thing scratching at the back of your mind? That presence you feel that doesn't have a voice, but you know what it wants when you get mad or too excited? Dorian asked as he turned his focus back to Damon. Yeah, Damon answered, but was slow to do so as he had a hard enough time trying to convince himself that such a thing as some other presence, some other force lived inside of him. You're gonna let it out. That sensation you feel when you make your eyes shift or when you bring out your claws, imagine having that all over your body. Concentrate, but take it slow. Imagine your body growing, changing and becoming one with your instincts, with the thing scratching at the back of your mind, but don't give in to it. It'll feel good when it comes, after all the pain stops. The pain is something else to worry about. You're going to feel more pain than you've ever felt in your life. Your body will feel like it's on fire as every bone in you breaks and changes. Your skull will be splitting as your fangs push out your teeth, while your face changes. After you change back, you're going to be hungry, really hungry. We'll hunt and kill something after your first change, and you can have first bite. Dorian explained as he folded his arms in front of his chest. Both Damon and Andrea were trying to picture everything in their minds as best they could. Neither of them could really see themselves going through that kind of pain and figured that maybe their dad was trying to scare them. After all they had watched him shift back and forth several times and he seemed to do so without looking as if he were in that much pain while doing it. They both knew he was telling the truth about being hungry after the shift though, as they had also witnessed him eat great amounts of food sometime shortly after shifting back to his human form. Dorian could see the hesitation in Damon's eyes and couldn't hold that against him. Nothing could prepare someone for their first change and all the pain they were going to feel. Damon exhaled and tried to calm and center himself while closing his eyes. He could feel urges, impulses almost begging to be unleashed and let upon the world. He could feel something, something scratching with a single clawed finger at the back of his mid, slowly scratching and scraping away at the wall in front of it. He didn't know how something like that could even come to mind so quickly, so vividly and he immediately opened his eyes again. It's okay. Take it slow. You're aware of it now and it wants to be let out. Dorian said as he let his arms fall to his sides in preparation of him needing to defend himself from his son. Damon was shocked as he looked at his dad. He hadn't said a word of what just ran through his mind and yet Dorian had just spoke about it like he could see it as clearly as Damon could. That's when the full weight of what Dorian said fell upon Damon's shoulders. Maybe he hadn't been lying or just trying to scare the two of them with how things were going to be for the first change. Damon exhaled through his mouth while shaking his hands loose before he closed his eyes. He could do this. He came from a long and proud line of wolf bloods and he knew he could live up to the challenge of being one of them. Damon focused on the scratching again. Though this time he imagined the wall that the thing was scratching at had become a giant double gate and the bar was slowly lifting. 
as the bar was lifting there was tiny shreds of light pushing through the center where the double gate was opening, and then the light became brighter as the gates opened more and more. Even from where he was standing Dorian could feel Damon's body heat go up. Damon's body seized up just before his muscles started to move, tensing and relaxing just under his skin before more and more muscle started to pack on. He could do this. He came from a long and proud line of wolf bloods and he knew he could live up to the challenge of being one of them. Damon focused on the scratching again. Though this time he imagined the wall that the thing was scratching at had become a giant double gate and the bar was slowly lifting. As the bar was lifting there was tiny shreds of light pushing through the center where the double gate was opening, and then the light became brighter as the gates opened more and more. Even from where he was standing Dorian could feel Damon's body heat go up. Damon's body seized up just before his muscles started to move, tensing and relaxing just under his skin before more and more muscle started to pack on. His bones began to fracture from the pressure being placed on them as his clothes became tight on him. His shirt felt like it was choking him for a second before it completely tore and fell away from his body. Both Dorian and Andrea could hear bones breaking as Damon fell to the ground. His feet growing too large for his shoes and began bursting out of them as he tried to call out in pain. His skull was on fire as he looked up at his dad. Damon's vision blurred as his skull was reconfiguring itself. Fur started to grow all over him as his spinal column became more pronounced. His face was elongating as his teeth were being pushed out of his mouth. The coppery taste of blood rushed over his tongue before he swallowed it and opened his mouth again. His pants tore and fell to the ground in tatters as his fangs were pushing through his gums. Damon could feel the fire all over his body and then there was numbness as darkness seemed to surround him. He felt trapped inside of his own mind as he could see the thing scratching at him. It was free and now he was the one on front of the gates, but the gates were closed. He could see outside but he couldn't get the bar for the gate to move for the life of him. Dorian looked down at the full war form his son had taken and was feeling a mixture of emotions ranging from pride to great concern as Damon's war form focused its attention on Dorian and slowly brought itself to stand fully. He was seven feet tall in this form and well over 300 pounds of brutish muscle. Andrea looked at her brother in frightening awe before trying to ease her way around the other side of the tree she was in front of while this war-formed wolf blood opened its mouth and growled at Dorian, baring its fangs at him. Dorian caused his eyes to shift and growled right back at the beast, baring his fangs at it. The beast flexed slender digits in and out of its palms before crouching low for just a moment and then using its powerful hind legs to push it forward as it leapt at Dorian with its hands in front of it, fully intending to pounce onto him and rend his flesh with the claws on each hand. To be continued next issue.